What is going on guys? Ben Glickin here coming back at you with another video. Today we will be rebuilding the Houston Texans in a fantasy style and I actually just got back from Houston a couple days ago so I'm very familiar with the team. That's my credibility now is that I've been to Houston before. Um, but as you can see from this team they're really built on a solid defensive base. 89 overall defense, 75 overall offense and of course what's the middle between 75 and 89? 79 i'm not a math guy but that seems to check out for 79 overall and it's really about building up the offense we've got a great piece to build around in deshaun watson he's going to be fantastic in game kind of got to figure out what we want to do with running back we got nuck deandre hopkins is phenomenal and then does will fuller kind of be a player that we build around mm, not sure we're going to figure it out though we got jj watt we got tyron matthew we got Jadavion Clowney. we got dj reader Zach Cunningham is a young player to build around potentially. Whitney Merciless. I mean, it's a pretty good team. So let's see what we can do with it. All right, so it's a decent team. Got Deshaun Watson to build around. He should have star, superstar development maybe. He has star. That's going to be a really important trait to build around. Only 22 years old. And then the offensive line, Zach Fulton is really the only piece that I'm comfortable with. We have uh, Martinez Rankin, Nick Martin, Senio Kilamente, and Chantrell Henderson. All of those can go. Not really a fan. Ryan Griffin took over for CJ Fedora, which when he retired. And then Will Fuller, Fuller can't really catch. Braxton Miller is a converted quarterback. We got Bruce Ellington, who is a special teams guy at what, South Carolina. Yeah, like special teamer. Well, he played wide, wide out there. But that Kiki Guti is all right. Sammy Coates. But it's not a great receiving core outside of DeAndre Hopkins, in my opinion. Lamar Miller, Deontay Foreman, Alfred Blue is a decent trio. I think we probably should be fine there. Got Joe Webb, another weird player, and uh, Jay Prosh at fullback. On the defensive side of the ball, of course, we have Tyron Matthew, Jadavian Clowney, Zach Cunningham, Bernardrick McKinney, who I think should be probably higher overall uh, than Zach Cunningham for sure. I would put Bernardrick McKinney at like an 81, 82. We got Whitney Merciless, who probably should be higher overall as well. He just played injured. So he's 28, quick development. We also got Duke Egia for I'm pretty sure he's a rookie. Out of, yeah, out of Wake Forest. So, we got some interesting players. Andre Hall, there's something going on with him in real life that that is uh, pretty sucky. I think he has some type of thing wrong. I don't remember what it is. What I'd probably want to do is convert Tyre Matthew to cornerback because he's going to play nickel cornerback anyway. And he'll just probably start on the outside and Aaron Colvin will be the nickel corner because he was such an effective nickel cornerback in Jacksonville. So Tyra Matthews is going to play corner. He looks about seven feet tall from this angle. A little bit ominous there. But um, I think with Tyra Matthew corner, he's a 90 overall. And we're not going to start with that Corey Moore against Ibrahim Campbell. We're going to start the rookie Justin Reed out of Stanford at free safety. He was one of my favorite safeties in the class. I think he's going to be a fantastic player and he'll have an opportunity with this squad right here is he should start at free safety now as he is hopefully the highest overall at the position he's not he's a 74 overall we're gonna go ahead and start him and um wow the defensive line's not great well i mean it is but like we got dj reader jj watt two great pieces and then was it christian covington it is like i don't i don't want him starting at right end for sure and with Aaron Colvin, great in the nickel. Kevin Johnson, shout out to him. Really nice guy. And uh, I'm going to trade Kareem Jackson for sure. I'm going to trade Jonathan Joseph. He's like 34. He's 34. I mean, it's just, it's just not going to work out. So we've got a pretty good base to start off with. Just going to try and get a little bit younger. And that's going to start with trading Jonathan Joseph and Kareem Jackson. Kareem Jackson's got to be like 29, 30 years old at this point. Yeah, he's 30. And then offensively... It's just all about upgrading the offensive line and giving Deshaun Watson some weapons. So let's go ahead and get into some trades. Damn, you gotta love Kareem Jackson's cap hit. Wow, Texans sure do know how to pay some cornerbacks. Kareem, or excuse me, not Kareem. God, Kevin Johnson, of course, on his rookie deal. And that is, he was a first round pick. So that's a lot of money. I might look to get rid of that. But uh, yeah, we need, to, we need to pay a lot of players less so we have room to bring in more talent. Because a lot of these players are getting paid a pretty hefty salary. Like, a lot. Alright, first trade is going to be Kareem Jackson, Dylan Cole, and a second round pick. 
Picking up a player I don't know if I've even traded for ever before in a rebuild last year or in 17 or whatever, but Marvin Jones Jr. Marvin Jones is a really talented player, 28 years old, so I wasn't too happy about that, but I mean, he'll probably have some room to improve, and he's a really good number two, so I'm happy about that. His cap hit is $6 million per year. We're fine with that. We ditched Kareem Jackson's contract. We got Will Fuller in the slot. Bruce Ellington's a decent backup. I am probably going to trade him, though, and just keep Braxton Miller and Kiki Kuti as our main backups, and we have a lot of receiving depth. They're just not incredible players. And then at free safety, I can trade Corey Moore because I want to start Justin Reed. Dude, I might... Hmm, I might trade Kevin Johnson. I might trade Kevin Johnson. I think that might be the best move. Oh, wow. That went through immediately. All right. Bruce Ellington, Corey Moore gets me. Brandon Williams for the Ravens. 29-year-old defensive end. He's going to slide right in to play right end in our 3-4 going to be a really really welcomed addition to the team as you can see he is a major major upgrade over christian covington or joel heath so uh you know more than happy to do that shane leckler certainly has seen better days still a great punter 42 years old and uh you know what I, man am i gonna throw it in this year yeah i'm gonna throw in the kevin johnson shout out play that we're gonna trade him anyway though kevin johnson a fourth this year and a third next year gets me Eric Ebron. He's going to play tight end. And we're going to focus on on the offensive line through the draft. These guys really aren't going to have a whole lot of trade value. The offensive line is terrible. It really is. But the team around Deshaun Watson is good. I think he has a lot of offensive weapons. And then defensively, I think we're pretty solid as well. Brandon Williams is going to slide over and play right end. And uh, we're going to be we're going to be in a good spot. All right, so Brandon Williams is the newest right end. And as long as Justin Reed has a super solid season, we're looking at best defense in the NFL. Offensively, we talked about it. It's all right. We could be better, but uh, that's going to be it. I'm going to simulate, and I'll see you guys at the midseason mark. All right, midseason mark. We are 7-1, and one, as are the Denver Broncos, who we face coming out of our bye week, or just before our bye week, I should say. And um, we are currently sitting way atop the AFC South. Sim is kind of weird this year. The Jags are three and five, Titans three and four, Colts four and four. I, I don't think the records are consistent at all ever. But we are seven and one. We got some XP to spend, so I'm a big fan of that. And I think I will do that. I don't really like when it upgrades automatically. I just I feel like it's it's weird with uh, player progression. But uh, we got contracts to negotiate. Can coach XP to eventually spend. So we got Jadavian Clowney, Tyron Matthew, of course, on a one-year deal. And then the rest of the players are pretty pretty bad overall. They don't they don't really matter that much. Shane Leckler, 42. I'll find a different punter. But Clowney's gotta come back. Tyron Matthew. Right, we're gonna pay him as a cornerback. That's, that's a really good face scan. Alright, Tyron Matthew comes back as well. We're fine on the rest. Brought back our two guys we wanted to and then uh coach xp do i save up and get coach xp for deshaun watson um i don't think so i think i'm gonna do do that and then offensive line eventually that will matter also turned on the ring light so that's looking a bit better went 11 4 and 1 jaguars came back to make the playoffs going 9 and 7 but yeah we dominated the afc south and uh Deshaun Watson has nine experience points. Will Fuller has four. Defensively, anyone standing out here? Justin Reed has four. Love to see that. That's an awesome season. Let's check out the stats. Really hope Deshaun Watson won MVP as he finishes with 4,200 passing yards, just about 30 touchdowns, only five interceptions. Great season. Rushing Lamar Miller, 1,000 yards, four touchdowns. Deontay Foreman had eight as the backup. Not a huge yards per carry there, but the offensive line is garbage, so I get that. Receiving, Nuck had 1,100 yards, four touchdowns. Marvin Jones, 722 or 21 yards on 72 catches, three touchdowns. Will Fuller in the slot had over 1,000 yards and 12 touchdowns. Absolutely beasting. Eric Ebron did all right. Lamar Miller was a fixture in the passing game as well. Offensive line didn't let up a ton of sacks, but they were very bad run blocking. And then Tyra Matthew at cornerback. 
Our, we had two cornerbacks that led our team in tackles. Did I not trade Jonathan Joseph? That's a mistake. All right. Tackles for loss, 13 for Whitney Merciless, 10 for J.J. Watt. Sacks, 13 and a half for Jadavion Clowney, 12 for J.J. Watt led the team. Interceptions, 3 for Tyre Matthew and Jonathan Joseph were tied. Fumble recoveries, 3 for J.J. Watt. Touchdowns. All right, none. I'm all right with that. Yearly awards. Matt Ryan wins MVP. Deshaun Watson finishes at number four. I think it's probably the only Texan we'll see in any offensive category. Is Deshaun Watson wins Offensive Player of the Year. That's why you got a ton of the uh, XP points or skill points or whatever. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Von Miller in the AFC. A lot of Chargers in there. Like, a lot of Chargers. Like, one, two, three, four Chargers in the top ten. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Lamar Jackson. He's a cheat code, honestly, in franchise. And Justin Reed finishes in fifth for Defensive Rookie of the Year. So, the question is... Do I spend my, my XP right now? I think probably. So I'm going to spend some coach XP, and then I'm going to upgrade these players. And um, what do I want here? Probably probably defensive backs. All right, so for winning offensive player of the year, Deshaun Watson gets superstar development, which is uh, pretty awesome. He had a tremendous season. He just did everything you could imagine, you could imagine besides MVP. So Pro Bowl... NFL passer rating leader, offensive player of the year. What a fantastic season for Deshaun Watson. And uh, what's his throw power? Probably pretty low. 92? That's not terrible. All right, so Deshaun Watson's up to a 92 overall with confidence. That's going to be gigantic for this team. Kiki Kuti had six points. What did you do? What did you do? He made the Pro Bowl as a return man, probably. All right. Way to go. Even Will Fuller made the Pro Bowl and got star development. He's up to an 87 overall now. This team is looking just unreal. Wow, Jadavion Clowney got downgraded, it looks like. He made his third Pro Bowl. They're like, fuck you, you're, you're down to star. That doesn't even make sense. Congratulations on the Pro Bowl. Your development's worse now. Play, play worse. Like, th that makes no sense. Wow, Jonathan Joseph... Has a fucking M&M for a head. What is this? What is going on here? <laughs> what is this? What is this face scan? Oh my god. I gotta tweet this out. Twitter.com slash Bengal Designs. Link in the description. I'm gonna... I'm gonna uh, tweet at Equipment Guru. The guy who, uh, who does this stuff. <laughs> for EA. What in the world? Unreal. And here I am thinking Charles Peanut Tillman retired, but he just took over the head of Jonathan Joseph. We're going into the divisional. Can we please beat the Jaguars? Yes. Blake Robbie Bortles goes down. And uh, Tyre Matthew, who's so close to getting another experience point, ended up getting one. So we'll upgrade him some more. He's up to a 94 overall with confidence. And he's looking like a really, really good cornerback. And his speed even goes up one. Up to a, a 91 overall speed rating. Big fan. All right, to beat the Chargers. With the Chargers are absolute cheese in Madden Sim all the time. There's no way we beat them to make it to the conference championship here in year one. There's just never a shot with the Chargers. We lose by two. You guys can't see it in the top left, but we lose 24 to 22. And uh, the Chargers are without doubt going to win the, uh, the Super Bowl. Yeah, really close game. We just, uh, we couldn't bounce back at any point. It was real close, but it looks like we scored 12 points. Did we have, did our kicker miss two extra points? Is that what cost us the game? No. How do we score 12 points? So, he kicked 12 points. Huh. Alright, so Brandon Williams got a safety. What a weird game. Either way, uh, really productive first season. We made the team a lot better. And uh, they performed really, really well. Now it's all about improving this offensive line. Martinez Rankin. We're going to try to trade these guys. If they have any value, if we can do like a super trade by trading three mediocre offensive linemen for one sick one, I would be... 
in uh, favor of that. That'd be pretty nice. But uh, it's time for the offseason. All right, anyone available in free agency that I might want? Offensive lineman. Odell. Oh, man. I mean, like, I obviously want Odell. I, there's just no way. We're going to have to go all in on Trent Brown, probably. Trent Brown accepts he is the newest member of the Houston Texans. He's going to be an awesome addition to our offensive line. Probably going to keep him at right tackle. I think that's probably going to be the best play for us. And at a... Uh, we need to find a franchise left tackle. Nick Martin actually could still start at center. We just need a guard. We need a tackle. Those are big, big priorities. We wanted Odell, but it just didn't make sense to offer on him. We have our receiving core stat, stout, and ready to go. Defense is looking really good. We're in a good spot. I need to trade. He's that man. Jonathan Joseph is down to an 81 overall. He regressed a lot. He regressed a lot. Clearly. So even though I upgraded him to an 86 overall, he goes down five. Ugh, I need to trade him in. I need to trade him in the draft, probably. Oh my god. Vaughn Baldwin out of Texas AM. So not even that far from Houston. Probably like an hour and a half away from Houston. 43740. Absolutely incredible top three skills. We need to keep him in the state. All right, this draft class is just absolutely stacked. Another Texas A&M guy. He's okay. Uh, I'm just kind of, you know... Uh, wow. He's pretty quick. Just kind of marking some players, adding them to my draft board that I think are going to be really super talented. And uh, it's a really, really strong draft class at the top. I'm going to have to trade up. All right, draft time. We pick pretty late. I am trading up. I'm not letting that cornerback go. I don't care what I have to give up. Honestly, I don't. He's incredible. I might... I don't even know. I, like, he's ranked number 16. And I'm telling you, this is the best player in the draft. He just is. Oh, what do I need to trade up to get? I'm going to I'm gonna acquire the 8th eighth, the eighth pick, maybe. Maybe the 7th. I don't trust... I don't trust him being available. Ninth, 83 overall defensive tackle goes number one overall. This is a strong draft class. Yeah, Jonathan Joseph has no interest at all from any team now. I really missed the boat on that one. That was a mistake. Price is steep, but I think it's worth it for this caliber of a player. We're trading a one this year, a one and a two next year to get the seventh overall pick from the Oakland Raiders. I think the value is there. I'm telling you, this is a franchise cornerback. I can't miss getting him. And there goes another super high overall player, 81 overall, Vincent Nixon. Please tell me he's still available. He is. Okay. We're taking him. Vaughn Baldwin, 437 speed at 6 foot 2. Incredible top three skills. Here he is. 80 overall superstar development. He's ranked number 14 in the class. So he's a he's clearly a beast. Superstar development is huge. Check out his ratings. Good God. 93 speed, 83 man, 88 zone, 86 press coming out. 80 jumping's all right. No block shed. Awareness is okay. Catching is pretty high. This is an absolute stud. And of course, superstar development. I'll always take that. Always. And there goes an 82 overall running back. Just the pick before us. We looked at him. There's just no real need to take him. I'm going to take Chadrick Dean here. 462 speed, very agile, good top three skills. I think he's going to fit in really, really well. 76 overall normal development, rank number 42. We took him at 60 something, maybe. I think this is like mid or late second round, something like that. It might be like the 27th pick in the second round. So, uh, I mean, you do the math on that one. I'm, I'm not really a math guy, and I don't remember exactly where the pick was. But next up, we're going to focus on offensive linemen. All right, trading a three this year and a six and a seven. Picks aren't too valuable to me. For a third round pick next year from the Bears, they uh, picked super high in this draft. So I'm thinking that uh, the pick's not going to be super valuable that we traded away since we're going to be good and their pick's going to be a little bit more valuable, like 30 spots up. So I'm a big fan of that. And we will be taking Cade Zigonina. Zonina, I'm not sure how... ZGO would be pronounced in this Zagonina 
whatever his last name is, we're taking him out of Montana. Good top three skills. Great bench press. It's kind of what I'm looking for. He's a 76 overall with normal development. Fantastic fifth round pick here, ranked in the top 46. He will be an immediate upgrade on the offensive line. And that is the draft. So we only drafted three players, but they were three really solid players. We have picks next year. I could not pass up on this cornerback. I know we had to spend a top 10 pick on him, but entirely worth it. He's going to start. Jonathan Joseph will be traded if I can. Otherwise, superstar development, rookie from Texas. It's just an absolute monster. Great speed, great height. Just the prototypical best cornerback you could probably even get. All right, Kiki Kuti, he's a good player. Did well enough to make the Pro Bowl for us on special teams. We're going to use him to get better on the offensive line. Trading a four this year and a three next year for Andrew Norwell from the Jacksonville Jaguars. I mean, it's just, do we really need a decent fourth overall receiver? Or should we really upgrade on the offensive line? And that's exactly what we did. Andrew Norwell, Zach Fulton will play right guard probably now. And I need a left guard, or it should be a left tackle. Andrew Norwell is not, I'm not really feeling moving him over. So I might move the rookie Cade Zigonina in order to get a franchise left tackle somehow because that is imperative to our success. All right, I'm trading Chadrick Dean, who we drafted a sixth and a seventh, the sixth being next year for Shaq Mason from the Patriots. We're going to say, all right, offensive line, you're going to have to get a little bit versatile. We're going to move some guys around. We got to see who could probably play tackle the best on that left side. 6-1, not going to be Shaq Mason. I don't think Andrew Norwell could really do it either. He is 6'6", 325. Decent strength, good pass block. You know what? Andrew Norwell might be best suited to play left tackle, and I think that's what I'm going to do. I think I think he's just the best offensive lineman even on our team. It's going to be the easiest transition. He's going to play left tackle now. He'll probably be a slightly worse overall, and he goes down a little bit to a 91. But the offensive line is better. It is better. And what we could do is uh, start Zigonina at center. It's just, is there any real reason to do that? And I, I don't think so. He doesn't really have any good development. He's not particularly better than Nick Martin. We're going to keep Nick Martin there. All right, this is the team for season number two. Well, not quite. Baldwin is... I don't want Jonathan Joseph on this team, and I can't trade him. Baldwin's going to start. Aaron Colvin's going to stay in the nickel. Jonathan Joseph... He's a solid fourth corner, I guess. He's going to be a 75 overall by the end of the year. I'll see you guys at the midseason mark. So we are 4-2-1 at the midseason mark, currently sitting atop the total four-win AFC South. But uh, Lamar Miller is a free agent, or impending free agent, I should say. He is an 86 overall. Quick development, Will Fuller, DJ Reader, Eric Ebron, Whitney Merciless, all free agents as well, or will be at the end of the season. I definitely would like to bring back DJ Reader and Will Fuller. Lamar Miller is a bit more of a question mark. Might consider franchise tagging him at the end of the season. And I'll probably bring back Eric Ebron and Whitney Merciless as well. So Whitney Merciless, Eric Ebron, DJ Reader, and Will Fuller are all back. I don't know what I want to do with Lamar Miller just yet. And then Jonathan Joseph, no way. Nick Martin, we got to get better at center. I don't think he's the answer there. All right, as you can see, it was pretty awesome to draft a superstar dev cornerback because Vaughn Baldwin has eight skill points already. He's just getting XP so much every week. We're using our uh, training points on him as well. As you can see, the focus training is getting him a ton of XP. And it's just skill points for days so far for him. And we will be upgrading him. Man-to-man, -man zone. We're going to work it all in. We're just going to make him the complete cornerback that we know he can be. If you check out his ratings, really solid in zone coverage. Good press. But let's work on his man a little bit. Plus one speed there. Let's go back to man. Hopefully speed comes in here again because that would be awesome. We got a lot. Could be speed in there. It's not. But plus five tackling is really, really nice. He's up to an 85 overall. 90 man, 90 zone, 88 press, 95 speed. We need to work on block shedding. So slot is something we're going to we're going to probably focus on a lot at the end of the season. But we're in a really really good spot. We're going to simulate to the playoffs. Hopefully, we can pull ahead in the AFC South. It's a really tight race right now. All right, we won our division, finishing 
11, 4, and 1 again. Going 11, 4, and 1 once is weird. That's a weird record. But then doing it in back-to-back -back years, I believe. A little strange. Deshaun Watson, very good season, though. 43, almost 4,400 yards, 27 touchdowns, only 7 interceptions. Rushing Lamar Miller, just lackluster. And the offensive line improved, so... I mean, it's really not on the offensive line at this point. 854 yards, 6 touchdowns. Deontay Foreman, 10 touchdowns. But the yards per carry is bad from everybody except for TJ Yates, who's almost at 4 yards per carry. Way to go, TJ. DeAndre Hopkins, 1,000 yards, receiving 10 touchdowns. 1,100 yards for Will Fuller. Is that the exact same amount of yards he had last year? Not sure. Blocking. Quarterback sacks are not exactly where we want them to be. Could be worse, though. Zach Cunningham led our team in tackles with 117. Vaughn Baldwin, the cornerback, 116 as a rookie. Tackles for loss, 13 from J.J. Watt, 11 from Jadavion Clowney. Inter uh, sacks, 10. Only double-digit player is Jadavion Clowney. And the interceptions, 3 for Tyron Matthew. Vaughn Baldwin, the rookie, only snagged 2. Interceptions do not happen a lot in Sim for me. I got to figure out why that might be. Four forced fumbles for Clowney and Merciless led the team. And then at least one defensive touchdown. It is Tyron Matthew, the Honey Badger. Let's check out yearly awards. Doubt we're going to see anything crazy. Well, that is. Ezekiel Elliott of the 8-7-1 Cowboys wins the MVP. Deshaun Watson finishing at number three. No other Texans in there. AFC Offense Player of the Year is Le'Veon Bell. Deshaun Watson in there at number two. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Ryan Shazier, as he seems to do a lot in the AFC. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Corey Newman of the Baltimore Ravens. No Texans. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year is Bradley Celestin of the Indianapolis Colts. Von Baldwin finishes at number six. But we do have a decent amount of uh, skill points to spend. Nothing crazy. I hope Von Baldwin has like eight. He does have eight. That's actually, that's insane. That's a lot of experience points. He's going to be up a lot. Everyone else, one, one, zero, one, one, zero, one, one, eight. <laughs> On the offense, we have a couple guys with two, but Von Baldwin's like, nah, I'm going to have eight skill points. And keep in mind, this is only after the midseason mark. He previously had five that we used. He made the Pro Bowl. Got a ton of XP that way. This is this was this is one of the best draft picks I've ever had. He won Defensive Player of the Week in Week 14. This is a solid player we drafted. Ooh, another plus one speed. As we're kind of going back and forth with Von Balden, gets a plus two overall boost there. Trying to get block shedding up quite a bit. And so I really focused on slot this time around. And a block shedding does pop up a decent bit of the time. Plus three block shed there is absolutely huge. As you can see, 96 speed he's up to. 94 man, 95 zone, 92 press. 60 block shed is pretty good. And um, we can kind of do anything here. We're just going to focus on, on slot. Try to get that block shed up maybe a little bit more. And he is a 93 overall during his rookie season. Looking just incredible. 97 zone he's up to. This is a really, really good team. And J.J. Watt, his face scan looks interesting as well. That's, I'm going to leave it at that. He's 30. He's actually begun to regress a little bit. As you can see, well, that's confidence. But he was a 98 overall, I thought. Will it show in player regression? I think it would. Jonathan Joseph's going to be all over this list, probably. But I think J.J. Watt's going to be in here as well. If it would uh, if it would ever load. See my my coach there. Really, he's doing something. I don't know. Um, regardless, this is the team, and it is a very, very good team. Vaughn Baldwin, and I could upgrade Aaron Colvin. Oh, shoot. We got some points for the kicker. 10. All right, I'll have to do that. Whether you upgrade kick power or kick accuracy it's almost awareness only every single time which i don't mind i know that brings up his rating quite a bit and his awareness is nice right now but you could do power you could do accuracy doesn't really matter it's going to be very very rarely not awareness which i know i'm looking for awareness anyway but as you can see we did like 10 10 of these and got only plus two kick power and no plus to kick accuracy I don't think that awareness is skyrocketing though. I don't know who Warner is, but decent, decent stuff. And uh, all of my kickers and punters are looking very interesting. 
quite a look from Connor last name who doesn't exactly match his uh his picture Kiefer Warner is, is interesting but look at Oi House look at him in the game and then we're gonna click on him what is this someone that like is wearing a costume he doesn't look like the same guy regardless divisional championship time as we lost to the Steelers in week 17 but we get to face the 8, 6, and 2 Buffalo Bills in the divisional championship to face whomever, the Steelers, in the conference championship. So we went 11-4-1. They went 12-4. We could probably upgrade some players, but uh, I don't know. It's not going to be that that impactful for anybody but Deshaun Watson, and uh, he doesn't have any. So to advance to the Super Bowl, all we have to do is beat the 12-4 Pittsburgh Steelers and we do not uh no <laughs> we're making it a week farther every season which is nice which means that uh next season is our season we got blown out 35 to 14 pretty much by the pittsburgh steelers all we're looking for now is a good off season and let's get right back after it season three is our year we're gonna let uh our kicker Connor Oyehouse go. We got a great punter in Kiefer Warner. And uh, we re-signed him. But uh, I'll tell you what. We could use a solid kicker. We really could. And, oh, Lamar Miller. What do we do with you? What do we do with Lamar Miller? He's down to an 83 now. He just regressed quite a bit. Uh, I'm done with Lamar Miller. We're going to go out and get another running back. We don't really have draft picks, but we do have a good amount of cap room. We do have some draft picks. It's nothing crazy, though. And Carson Wentz is here. Obviously, no need to get him. Derrick Henry is here. That'd be interesting. As would Giovanni Bernard. Really, we're only looking at running back and kicker. And Sam Ficken's a 99 overall kicker. So, this is something you get when you have 300 XP. Uh, percent sliders is they will get uh, you know a, a monster it's pretty rare but it does happen and I will be signing him all right come on we get Derrick Henry and Sam Ficken that is a huge free agency for us Derrick Henry immediate upgrade over Lamar Miller who of course is no longer on the team he's basically a better Deontay Foreman and then Jay Prosh is still on the team he's not particularly good we'll upgrade him a little bit he'll go up to a 67 or 68 overall and uh, we're pretty much just going to focus on blocking. So he does go up to a 68 overall. And I guess, is that a pancake? Oh, yeah, blocking. All right, that makes sense. Pancake, you get it? All right. So we're in a really good spot. We're going to upgrade Justin Reed, Aaron Colvin, and ba uh, Vaughn Baldwin. We got our new kicker. We're going to simulate to the draft. And um, I don't really even know what we'd look for. The team is pretty good. Round three, there is a second round running back here with first round talent scouted. I mean, we might as well. He's got a nice combine grade. Here we go. 78 overall, ranked number 28 in the class. We took him at number 72. And he will be a good backup. Not that fast, but he's uh, he's well-rounded. Not a ton of value here on the board. We're just going to take uh, what appears to be the best player available. He's a center with star development. He's just not that good. So even though he has star development, which is fantastic, there's really no reason to, to use him or start him. So draft recap, there's not really too much to show you other than a new backup running back. And he and Deontay Foreman will uh, compete for playing time. I don't know. There's not a huge storyline there. It's the backup running back spot as Deontay Foreman gets a small speed upgrade to put him up to 91 speed. And the team is looking very, very good. I keep saying that, but it's so true. Brandon Williams is down to an 82. What is going on? Did you guys see that? Did y'all see that? Brandon Williams, 82 overall. He is 31. But God dang, he regressed a lot. He was like a 90. Oh, sweet. All right, season number three. This is going to be the team. Marvin Jones down to an 83. Players are, uh, are regressing a lot. Like, a lot. Not a huge fan of looking at all red. Minus 55 in total attributes for him. All right, all right. <laughs> oh, we didn't even sign. I guess Nolan will start at center. All right. 
So, um, team is solid. Team is really solid. Offensively, defensively, we're in a good spot. Special teams. Sam Ficken has 52 skill points. <laughs> Not enough skill points to purchase. What do you mean? I have 52. <laughs> He's not allowed to get upgraded anymore. Because it's like... It's locked into trying to upgrade awareness. And... It can only upgrade awareness and kick power at the same time. And his awareness is only... Like, it's up to a 99. So I think what we'd have to do if we wanted to upgrade that... Would be this. Now, I never change any ratings. But if I turned it down to a 90... And save that... I'm almost positive I would be able to upgrade him now. And that's the thing you run. It's very rare, but it does happen where one player just wins everything. And so you see a kicker like this. Um, Sam Ficken goes up to a 99 overall. Seemingly out of nowhere. But as you can see, we are upgrading him now because awareness is lower. And um, this is the only way to do it. And we're still probably going to get locked out at some point. But I don't think you guys really care about watching me upgrade a kicker. So, we're probably about done here. Now he's up to a 98. I guess manually making him worse is making him better. So, big stuff here. And, uh, yep, maximum rating. He can no longer be upgraded at all. 99k power, 99 kick accuracy, 99 awareness. <laughs> oh, man. I'll take it. Can't complain. Let's, uh, let's simulate straight to the playoffs, because we got to make it, right? Got to make it. Wow, we really didn't make the playoffs. 8-8. Eight and eight. Uh, I feel like this is the way it always ends. We have a really, really good team. We simulate, and we do not play well. It, that's just the way she goes, I guess. That's just the way she goes. Um... I don't know what to tell you. I mean, it's just super annoying when you get to this point where everyone is the same. And they just... The teams don't perform. And when I say everyone's the same, I mean everyone has about the same record. Very frustrating. But the team's good. It's not always about how far we can go in Madden Simulation. It's about how sick the team can get. And this is a very, very good team outside of center. Great running back. Great receiving core. Great quarterback. Great tight end. Or okay tight end. Fantastic secondary. Vaughn Baldwin is an absolute monster. This cornerback was as good of a cornerback as I could imagine anybody ever drafting. Because he was phenomenal coming out. He had superstar development. This is his second season. This is Vaughn Baldwin's second season in the NFL, and he's a 97 overall. Unreal player. You look at his ratings, 96 speed, 98 man, 98 zone, 61 block sheds low, 92 press, 87 tackle. This is the best cornerback in the NFL, without doubt, without a question in my mind. Um, but I'll tell you, good team, happy to do it. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you could uh, smash that like button. Subscribe if you're new, I would be very appreciative, and I will see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.